You know, one of the things that I think is unique about this study is the framework the study is, is found in, this kingdom concept. Because what we're saying is a kingdom woman, like a kingdom man, is a woman who is operating comprehensively under divine rule, which means society is no longer defining her, her history and background is no longer her basic definition, even she's not her ultimate self-definition. Mm. It is the rule of the king and his kingdom and what that looks like. And the reason why this makes it unique is that we can go all the way back to the beginning when God created man and woman and made her an equal participant in his kingdom initiative in history and not an add-on or an addendum. And I think when we when you go back to the beginning and she sees her significance and can trace that all the way through not only scripture, but the practical application of scripture in her daily life, that will bring a uniqueness to the study that I think is typically not in most studies. Mm. Yeah, I, looking at the book, looking at the study, all of it, it says one thing to me, and that is that God can dream a bigger dream than I can dream for myself. In every aspect and in every way, seeing that uh, he has set really uh, set a really high bar for me. And my job is to figure out uh, how do I achieve that? How do I achieve that based on who he's designed me to be? And I think we kind of get, we, we drill down into these specifics of what a woman should be in, in certain situations. And I think it's a great time to take a step back and look at from a real broad perspective, what is God saying for me? What is the dream that he's driven, dreaming for me? What does he want me to do? And I think it's so difficult, again, with all the hecticness of life, for both men and women today, to understand a comprehensive view of what God uh, wants me to be. Because we're so fractured, we're so tired, we're so exhausted, that we're not really living in the fullness of God. And when we do, it works so beautifully. In our marriages and, and, and relationships. Is, you know, and a lot of it's just good stuff we're doing. It's not <laughs> like it's all bad. We, we can see something wrong or sinful and call it that. But what happens when you're doing so much good that you're out of the will of God? Wow. That you're doing all the right things and you are not even close to God because you've missed his kingdom while doing stuff. Yeah. And so uh, it's like Martha. She was doing a bunch of stuff and she was missing Jesus. That's um, So many women have to be disappointed in that little exchange, <laughs> right? Because you get your value out of what you're doing. You're cooking for everybody, you know, and now it's time to do the dishes. Hey, Lord, you know, can you get Mary to get in here? And, <laughs> wow, that had to be disappointing. She thought she was doing the right thing. Yeah, well, he values us being. Yeah, he speaks so highly in the scripture about us abiding and being with him and how if we're not attached, we're not going to bear fruit. And if we're not making the time to do that and get connected with the direction that he has for us, then we're missing the point. Good things can even get in the way of God's best. And we're not going to know yeah. his best if we're not connected to know what he's telling us to do. So true.